Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of In the Community with Dr. Matt. And we're actually in the office today hanging out with Dr. Antonella. Hi guys! And uh, Dr. Antonella actually has a, a passion for fitness. And uh, you can actually find her online at Antonella... Kaler. K yeah. <laughs> K-A-H-L-E-R. K-A-H-L-E-R. That's right. Beautiful. So today we're going to chat about what she's passionate about, as well as um, talk about... I guess overcoming some stereotypes, like getting women to involve with barbell movements. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And how to train the glutes more efficiently. Yes. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Which I think is super important to be protective for the back, the knees. Overall exactly. Health. And I keep telling people, you know, like it's not a superficial type of thing. It's so much more than just having a round butt, which is in these days, like it is an important muscle that we have to keep healthy. It's part of so many daily activities and daily motion. And you can really kind of uh, cut yourself short and uh, have some dangers with your lifting if your glutes are not properly activated and you're yes. just uh, kind of throwing yourself in there. I think, I know I talk a lot about it on my Instagram and social media. But I think one of the biggest things is if you keep your hips strong, one of the biggest markers for longevity and living a long, you know, thriving life, as I like to say, um, you know, you have to have strong hips because you can catch yourself, you're less likely to fall, break a mm -hmm. hip. And I mean, we all know once you break a hip, if you go into some sort of care, you're that much less likely to come out. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So I mean, we can go on and on about where that goes, but essentially being proactive about your body and staying strong and healthy starts with the glutes. Mm -hmm. And even if you are in a position that you've already had any kind of joint replacement surgery, it doesn't mean that you're off the hook. You now you still need to work very, very hard to make sure that the muscles around that joint are, you know, strong and can stabilize everything properly to increase the longevity of your artificial joint. If that's kind of the stage that where you're at, it doesn't mean you're off the hook. It, doesn't, it does not mean you're <laughs> off the hook, right? It doesn't mean get your knee replaced and that's it. It's not yeah. one and done, right? Yeah, exactly. You gotta actually look after your body and be protective of the muscles, ligaments, and joints around mm -hmm. it. Yeah, so speaking of ways that, uh, you know, you can potentially damage your joints, I come from a background of long distance running, which did not do me any favors, especially even as, a, you know, I, I did it when I was a 20 year old, I did a lot of ultra marathon racing, like crazy, crazy stuff, grinding out hours and hours and hours on the treadmill, outside, on concrete, on asphalt, all the things that kind of end up jostling up your joints, ended up with a bunch of chronic injuries and stress injuries and all that kind of stuff. But I was determined that, you know, this is the way you get fit. You just need to run yes. for as much as you can every single day <laughs> and lie, right? that is that is not the way to go guys and I actually ended up uh, giving myself a pretty terrible hamstring injury I ended up rupturing my hamstring Ooh. and uh, I was around a person who was very much into Olympic lifting at that time and they use the opportunity to segue in and be like hey you know what's a much better way of uh, getting healthy you know you got to throw some weight onto a barbell okay. like excuse me I love that. <laughs> right like no 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 that's what those big powerlifting dudes do at the gym like it's the guy out there grunting trying to bench press 500 pounds yes. <laughs> that was my perception at the time which was completely misguided i did not think that that was an appropriate way for a female to get healthy and uh, boy did i ever need a reality check i'm now if you guys follow me you guys know i am barbell obsessed yes. i think that <laughs> which is a good thing which is great <laughs> i think unless you have some severe asymmetry issue that you need to do a lot of unilateral work that barbell compound movements are just the way should be the bread and butter <laughs> of yeah. what you do and everything else is just kind of to accessorize and to help but you need those compound movements yeah. but the compound movements is where a lot of people run into trouble especially with glutes because a lot of muscles kind of working at the same time and you kind of don't know if you're not really experienced what's firing what's not firing are you lifting with your back are you lifting with your butt are you lifting with yes. your thighs and people get a little confused so you know they'd be doing lots and lots of squats and they're gonna be telling me hey you know my thighs are getting really really thick and my glutes are staying the same you said that you know squats and deadlifts are good for this what's going on yes. it's like well your glutes aren't firing well how do I know if they're firing or not and that's where a lot of people kind of run into a problem that's where I'm a big fan of activation exercises activation so what do you um, I noticed you popped up for some of your stories in the morning uh, yeah. for activation exercises. I mean I think I've seen you do the the monster walks yep which one's your favorite Oh, it, well, it depends for what. I uh, absolutely sure. I love uh, banded exercises. I love monster walks. And bands are so easy. You know, seven bucks on Amazon, you can get a nice little kit of all sorts yes. of resistance bands. Like, there's really no excuse to not having 
of resistance band. Absolutely. <laughs> the right? it's, it's so easy. You can, yeah, I, I throw it in. I have like my basic thicker resistance band that lives on my purse. So even if I'm traveling with that, it's, yeah. it's, it's just there. You know? it's, so that's one of the things I recommend when I'm doing all of my uh, little posts there. Is I yeah. say, hey, take a, take a band, the uh, flat bands, yeah. right? And just have it folded up in your purse or your, your briefcase, whatever it is. Exactly, it's zero so effort. It. Absolutely. You look at it, you got to do something. Yeah. <laughs> you can't you can't just idly live in the back of your purse or in the back of your sock drawer. You know, it's got to make an appearance. So I uh, yeah, absolutely love banded monster walks. I love band pull-aparts. Yeah. That's because, uh, you know, I spend a lot <coughs> of the day kind of either hunched over, playing with my daughter, having all sorts of postural issues. So I find that, you know, doing those pull-aparts and really kind of opening Open up. up helps so, so much. It's the easiest and, proactive thing you do on your own. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's so, so very simple. And I know it's a pain in the butt to get that done before you start compound lifts because you just want to go, 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 lift, of lift, course. lift. But it makes such a huge difference. Yes. And it's like, yes, I it know sometimes in the want. morning when you exactly, when you're activating, it's like, oh, why am I doing this? It's so early, you just me give up. me a barbell. <laughs> yeah, wake me up or something. But it's, it's so important, it makes such a big difference. Neat. I'm gonna actually uh, grab a band and maybe you can show everybody Sure. My favorite monster walk. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I got one right on hand here. So just yeah, excuse me for one moment. Too. Yeah, absolutely. So no, and of course activation exercises do not only have to be banded. There's all sorts of stuff that you can do, like uh, some of the wall slides and you have me kind of sit up against the wall and we're doing this kind of motion is great for the back too, but the band is nice because the band kind of forces right you to be accountable. Yeah, absolutely. These are, these are the ones you're talking about, right? Yeah. yeah. I have one of these and I even just have like a, a smaller one the too. Smaller yeah. So, but yeah, these, this Neat. is absolutely fine. Neat. Do you want to show everybody how you do your activation exercises? Sure. Because I think this is really important, right? If you're starting to learn to use a barbell, um, one of the most yeah. important things is you have to cue the right muscles to get the motor pattern down. Mm -hmm. And you're basically a product of your habits. So if you keep doing the same thing, sitting at the desk all day, and then you can't ex expect yourself to be zero to 60 miles per hour. Yeah, so for the monster, there's a couple of band of things that I like. So for the monster walks, yeah. just have them, like to have them just above the knee, make sure that the knees are pointed out so that they don't collapse in. That's also going to be something I address in the next one. Yeah. And it's really just a question of kind of getting comfortable and then just going out and having a lateral motion and uh, squeezing against the band laterally to kind of really get the glute meats uh, activated firing, so, yeah. you know, and firing up so that you don't start doing the Charleston because I am really, I'm going to show you here. Now, what's the, is that, where did you get the name Charleston? <laughs> my that, old that coach, my old Olympic weightlifting coach yeah. used to yell at me because I would go into a squat and I'd start doing this. Right. And he was this big, big Bulgarian guy with a luxurious mustache. Yeah. I actually um, won the Olympics way, way back in the 70s. And wow. he uh, coaches out at U of T. Yeah. And he went, Antonella, stop doing the beep, Charleston. Yeah. <laughs> and he'd really call me out on it. But of course, because it's dangerous, because if you're squatting and yeah. you're doing this kind of thing, and you're doing this little knee motion, and it felt fine. That's yeah. the dangerous thing. Because I told him, like, it's not a big deal. Nothing hurts. It's like, well, nothing hurts yeah. now. Yes, now. that's important. So another nice one to do for that, apart from the lateral monster walks, is if you end up uh, just basically doing some wider stance squats against the resistance band, but right. uh, like a goblet squat with either a kettlebell or a dumbbell so that you can push out and squeeze your knees up right. against the band when you're actually going through the motion. So that when you squat, you kind of keep it in the cued. back of your mind and keep it cued. Now do you, uh, one interesting thing is do you play with your foot position at all? Oh yeah, all yeah. the time. I find yeah. that because uh, the way that kind of my angles are, yeah. I need to go wider stance. And usually you wear a lifting shoe when you're doing your Absolutely, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's not, not the best shoes right now to do, uh, to do lifting because I'm wearing running shoes, but yeah. of course I'm a big fan of either, you know, if you can't afford the nice big fancy Olympic lifting shoes, but they, just that, they keep. They yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they last yeah. forever, but you can get a nice pair of flats like K Swiss or something like that, or the uh, All Stars, yeah. something with a basic rubber sole so that you can dig deep into the ground. Because the problem with, of course, running shoes is it's like it's trying nice. to squat on a marshmallow. <laughs> how much stability, how much drive can you get when you're just kind of bouncing yeah. around, right? So I like. If you take a look at my videos, I have a, a pair of uh, like the nice Adidas lifting ones, but I also have the standard K-Swiss. I think they were like 19 bucks, and that's yeah. what I do a lot of my Which lifting. Which is easy for anybody to get, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Plus they're very stylish and retro if you're into that kind of thing. But I think that's a really, I mean, the equipment for weightlifting is so basic. Right? Oh, absolutely. Like if you're gonna start using the barbell, whether it's 100, 120, you can get some really nice ones. I saw a pair for 265 yesterday. Wow. Right, which yeah. is the new Nike pairs, right? Yeah, yeah, I have yeah, the yeah. older ones. But my, my older Nike Romelios, they're called, um, they've lasted me since like 09. Yeah. Right? And you only walk into the gym in them. 
Exactly. Right? So, I mean, you're not like wanting to look aside. Yeah, so but it's I, an easy investment. Yeah, but I find that a lot of people have been saying it's, and I've kind of had that before. There's still, it's getting better because I guess CrossFit is becoming more mainstream, so people are acknowledging Olympic lifts a little more and the heavier lifting a little more but if you have the standard shoes with a wooden platform yeah. make so much noise when you go and you do your lifts yeah. and then people start to complain <laughs> that's kind of the rain. one downside <laughs> like but my neighbors when I'm dropping the barbell in the garage yeah, yeah. and yeah, I hear that like all the time even from people who don't do uh, any lifting they say oh you know why do they do that at the gym why do they make so much noise why do they drop the barbell after they raise it up is it like a macho thing it's like no if you drop it down slowly you can rip out your shoulder <laughs> yeah. you know like yeah. it's a safety issue nobody's trying to be like weird and macho about it but there's Absolutely. still a lot of misconceptions about barbells that's you know what I'm trying to break through with a lot of the ladies is that so, you know the barbell is your friend. <laughs> so how do you um, start ladies off like get them more excited about the barbell because I mean basically they want to a lot of time you want to see you know fat loss tone up yeah right? which is tone up really means shed a layer of fat and gain build some muscle, muscle right yeah so what would be your basic like you talked about squats maybe a little bit barbell yep. squats and then what would be other things that you like. Uh, I love stuff like a deadlift for pelvic work, absolutely. Uh, bench press, just based on my lifting background, is not a favorite because right. Olympic lifting is so leg dominant, but yeah. I'm getting better with it. So, but it's still a fantastic exercise. Of course, we can do dumbbell so stuff. Bench press. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> Lots of uh, flat and inclined bench press. I'm getting, uh, I'm getting over my prejudice against bench presses. It's funny because I bought a bench there about eight weeks ago yeah. and added it to my garage. It's like, oh, you know, just to keep things interesting, maybe I'll start benching for a while. Yeah. And I've never liked it in like 15 years. I've never really enjoyed it. Exactly. Like so. if you're not, if you're not into yeah. it, it's very yeah. hard to break through that. But I'm a big, big fan of Romanian deadlifts. Okay. And mm -hmm. it's uh, lately been all about the barbell hip thrusts. Okay. Yeah. Which, yeah. Have you seen? Uh, What's his name, that popular guy? Brett Contreras? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah that, I actually, right? uh, he wrote a glute program for me that I'm starting today. I tagged him in a post right before that I got in touch with him because he's like, guys, I, like I mentioned before, follow him. He does fantastic work at the glute lab and it's yeah. just glute domination and tons of activation exercises, like dozens and dozens of uh, kind of things that you can even do in your daily warm up if you're not comfortable with the barbell hip thrusts. If quite you're yet. just learning how to use your hips again. Exactly. So we got the, the monster walks that you demo there at the band, which is something easy anybody can start doing right Ooh. now, which is also protective of your low back and your knees. So I strongly sure. suggest those are important movements. Um, do you want to show somebody how they set up for a barbell hip thrust? I'll yeah. get some cushions out for you to make it comfortable. Yeah, sure. I, I can do it if, if, you, if you want me to do it. It's fine either or. No, it doesn't matter you, you, you can do, do the a little preamble, yeah. <laughs> no, the, the big problem, I guess, with the barbell hip thrusts is that unless you have that specialized bench that they do sell, yeah. it does require a little bit of setting up and this getting creative. Yeah, absolutely. So you, so you know how you're back. Yeah. Yeah. So. And this, I think oh, this they, is I know, <laughs> I know at the gym, yeah, there's a hole in the middle. It's for yeah. <laughs> pregnancy, right? I was not right? ready for that. So. With that, and I'll make sure you, Grace, do you mind just holding this for us? And just make sure it's checking out the tension. Yeah. And I think this is really important just because people don't, I want to put this so you don't. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. There you go. I'll sit on it so it doesn't move. Yeah, so we have our kind of imaginary barbell, and I tell people don't just throw a barbell onto your hips because people do that, they start loading weight, and they're like, oh my gosh, this hurts so bad, which it does. Like, you can even fold a mat a few yeah. times underneath to kind of tuck it underneath the barbell, or you can get one of those little fold Somebody at the gym things. now has a little special yeah. piece for it. I think that yeah, but don't try to just throw it onto across your hips because that's going to hurt. So if you have your kind of imaginary barbell, it is just a question of coming up and kind of doing a thrusting motion and holding for a couple of seconds at the top and, and keeping your... Anyway so we can see us. There we go, that's yeah. better. And keeping your neck neutral. So I see some people trying to do this and they yank their neck back and they kind of try to generate momentum. So don't do that. Protect your control neck. It. You control it. Nice and controlled yeah. and up. And when you and make sure that your kind of spine is tucked underneath and keep everything nice and steady and flexed. And yeah, don't uh, and make sure that your foot position like don't have it super out yes. like that. So you're sliding around. People have trouble I find finding a nice position. So start light. Start with just the barbell. Start with a couple of dumbbells even, yeah. or maybe with nothing. And of course, you can always do the one-legged variation where you just kind of yeah. hook one up, and you don't even need to wait for that. Right? Mm -hmm. You start with dumbbells, right? I think one of the uh, <coughs> excuse me. You okay. Yeah. Sorry. 
I think we're, thanks for showing that. I think that was important, because mo most ladies don't know how to do that, right? I think that's so important, right? Even for guys to learn how to activate their glutes. But uh, that one, one of the things I've also thought of, I don't know what you think of this, is foot position. Mm -hmm. So like when you have your foot positioning for things, how do you like to um, set up? Because I always try to mimic my same as my squat stance or my deadlift stance, so there's like some sort of... Yeah. Carry over. So for something to be aware for people who are listening today. Absolutely. I, like, I find honestly the thing that helps me the most is if you set up your phone because videos don't lie. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And don't be afraid that you're going to be that person at the gym that's taking out their phone and people are going to be rolling their eyes thinking, oh, you're taking selfies at the gym. Who cares? You want to make sure that your position is correct because as far as proprioception goes, we're not, we're not super good. <laughs> Sometimes something feels perfect and it's not. So I actually line it up so I can see my legs from parallel to see that if my knees are kind of collapsing in or if they're coming out yeah. width wise I do go very similar to where my squat is but sometimes I will just take a video and draw a line right across the leg kind of to highlight it to see what my position is to make sure that I have like a nice perpendicular angle so I don't have something flaring out or flaring in because okay. so cameras don't lie so use your camera at the gym yeah. Just don't be afraid to use your camera. Yeah, and I tell that to people all the time. Do a little form check. You know, set up a camera when you squat. The amount of times that I thought that things were going great, and I'm like, oh man, this is going to make it on my IG. I'm feeling good today. And then I take a video, and I'm like, ah. Right, never mind, never mind. <laughs> like, what am I doing with my shoulder here? This is starting to pop out, or the knee is wobbling. But it forces you to take a very honest look oh, what's at what's going on. Yeah. Did, um... Did you want to talk about the hip hitch? Absolutely. Did you want to touch on that briefly? Yeah. Or did you have some questions for me or did you want to talk about it? Uh, you can, you, Dr. Matt is the expert, so it'd be great if you talked a little bit about the importance of the hip hinge, primarily the importance of initiating like for a squat movement with the hip hinge, leading with the hips instead of leading with the, the knees. knees, and how to, if somebody knows and they see, okay, you know what, it's clearly all coming as a bounce from the knees, yeah. how to fix that, like whether with box squats or anything like, I like that. I box to kind squats. Of, yeah, right? guide themselves but I mean, along. Realistically, if people are short on time and they only have time to do one athletic movement, keep them in the best shape, I would say, you know, Olympic style grip, sure. high bar squats, right? Yeah. So with that, I think the biggest cues for me that have always worked well, and you'll probably find similar ones or a little variation, is dig your big toe in the ground mm -hmm. and then have your knees, as initiate the movement with the hip back, but have your knees open up, mm -hmm. right? So you, right away, instead of even allowing your knees to buckle in, right away your cue is big toe in the ground and knees open and then initiate with your hips coming back. So I'll show them on here. Yeah, absolutely. We get crazy usually. <laughs> so from here, usually, you know, imagine your big, big toe going into the ground and open your knees up. I'm gonna exaggerate a little bit, but I really think your spine should be stiff right? and then go back. So essentially your spine was meant to be rigid. It wasn't meant to really flex and take the load like that on the side. So really you want it to be stiff and butt back first, but big toe down, knees open, and then initiate, which I think works really well um, if you have a great stance or if you have a, a great pair of lifting shoes too. Sure, Depending absolutely. on your ankle mobility. And it's funny because you different. mentioned the uh, the spine and spinal being stiff and stable and the spine, I don't know if you uh, follow Dr. Stuart McGill at all. I've He's seen gonna that. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And he talks a lot about that. Like, people all want like a lot of back flexibility and all this kind of stuff. But a lot of times it kind of does more harm than good in terms of loading weight and losing that rigidity in the spine and yeah. you know, like I don't know what your recommendation is. I usually tell people to kind of open up, puff a bunch of air right into their core to yeah. brace or to wear a lifting belt to brace against something so they can reinforce the stability in their back. I, so I like not the lifting belt on the max and around the top end. Yeah. Um, I find it works really well. I think your cue is great. Like take a big breath and then drop down, right? Yeah. And I'll usually hold it until I get to 75% of the way up. Yeah. Right? Now here's the other thing, right? For I think that's the ideal way to lift, mm -hmm. right? And I would always use that myself. But there was uh, my physiotherapist, who I, I use her as a coach here in town. She's actually talking to me about, okay, put the, load the bar, right? And this will obviously be a sub-maximal weight, right? But load the bar and let your breath out of the bottom. <laughs> right? So she, she's telling me to do the opposite, yeah, yeah, right? I'm getting squashed like, like a cockroach. <laughs> I, I mean, like, for optimal, maybe, she, like, I would imagine she's talking about transverse abdominals, all these deep muscles in there yeah. to cue from a physical therapy standpoint. But for maximal performance, I would always 100% agree 
Take a big breath in, hold that breath, right? Yeah. And that's just to, you know, show you that both sides of the coin are going to be probably told to you at some point if you're doing sure. your research and Googling Dr. Google. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the ultimate Dr. Google. I find that if I let my breath out on the bottom too, like I end up with the, the, the butt, yeah, the butt wink. Yeah. Like I have to be <laughs> stiff and I have to have a big breath in. Yeah. When she told me that, I was like, there is no way I'm going to make that on, you know, you got X amount of pounds on your back, 80, 90% of your max, you're going to crumble. Yeah. Right? That would be my, yeah. my thoughts. <laughs> yeah. So, cool. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to share? I think those are kind of my uh, big ones. Oh, I guess we talked about how to get over the fear of the barbell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said that. I'm a little biased because I love the barbell and I'm an up and up them type of person. So when I was injured from my running and somebody told me this is what you got to do, I was like, yo, let's do it. <laughs> I got this kind of thing. But a lot of women, <clears throat> not to be, you know, j to generalize, but yeah. the many, many ladies that I work with, I started to try to sell them on the idea of the barbell and they get intimidated. They want light dumbbell you work. Have to use the barbell. Yeah, I, I, I think it's non-negotiable. Like if you're going to optimize your health, yeah. or even if you're a runner and you're going to be optimal performing as a runner, I think you need to use the barbell twice a week. Yeah. And it's funny because when I was training with my lifting team, um, so this was back when I was at McMaster, we actually a lot of times joined up our training sessions with our sprinters, with our varsity sprinters. Yeah. And they would be there, of course, yeah, doing some box jumps and things like that. But guess what? They would be there pumping out power cleans, working on explosive movements, working yeah. on that drive. It doesn't mean that, like, you know, if you, unless you're a power lifter, like, the barbell barbell's still going to be useful for you. <laughs> yeah. So I think what you were saying, I wanted to touch on it before we finished mm -hmm. off today, was um, you said about spine rigidity. Yes. Right? I think it's super important. Your spine was essentially meant to transfer force from back and forth, right? Right. So um, the important thing is think about your, your ball and socket joints as your hips and your shoulders. Like most of your movement should come from your hips and your shoulders. Mm -hmm. This should just be rigid to transfer forces. So if you don't move as well on your shoulders or your hips as you like, then it's time to start working on them. Yeah, so absolutely. Actually be in good positions and use the barbell really well. Yeah, to not overkill all of the mobility, like the spinal mobility exercises. Like, you know, you see a contortionist and it looks very cool, but that doesn't mean that that's going to be doing you any benefits on your back squat. Absolutely. Right? Right? So, so what's, the, what's the basics then, if a, if a lady was watching this and she wanted to start out barbell squat? Yeah. Right, and I tell them it's like, don't be afraid to just start with the barbell and uh, nothing else. Like some people like to start with dumbbells and work on the barbell. Just get under the bar. It's 45 yeah. pounds. You can get the female bar. It's 35 pounds. You know, if you're loading major muscle groups, it's fine. Like it's not going to crush you. It's going to be fine. So barbell squat, absolutely. Deadlifts, play around with whether you're like the conventional deadlift, the Romanian deadlift, which is my personal favorite, or if you want to get sumo deadlift if you want to turn it, open up your stance a little more kind of play around with it and find what you're comfortable with but absolutely the big compound lifts like squat yeah. deadlift and then, then the, you know the overhead presses and all that all of those guys and, don't, don't be <laughs> and the bench press yeah. don't be afraid about getting bulky like yes, don't, you know, don't the bulk that. comes. Yeah, the bulk comes from uh, the uh, excess body fat that's over the muscle. It's yeah. you know, if you, uh, you look at a lot of uh, the women that are quite lean but are unbelievably strong, they actually look quite petite. Yeah. It's because the muscle muscle isn't very voluminous. Like even if you're training a lot for hypertrophy and you're getting lots of fluid, lots of blood flow, you're still not gonna look like a you know the Michelin man of muscle. Yeah, and you don't you don't have don't enough be afraid. testosterone to hit that point either, right? Yeah. Like usually when you think about bulking or being too bulky, it's you know people who are manipulating their hormones with drugs. Yeah. Not to mention, ladies, I tried a bulking cycle like a really honest one, like yeah. mild calorie surplus, lifting heavy. It's hard. It's, it's so yeah. No, it's 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 hard to put on that much muscle. Yeah. If you're trying to put muscle on, you appreciate how difficult yeah. and how much of a grind that actually is. Absolutely. You know, people think they're gonna lift a couple of times and they're gonna end up looking like Miss Olympia, who I think looks fantastic. But let's say that's, that's not your kind of thing. Yeah. But it's you don't appreciate how much work has to go in there, how many bulking cycles you need to do to push your body there. You know, it's putting on muscle is really tough. It's a lot tougher than you think. <laughs> Beautiful. Is there anything else you want to share before we wrap up? No, I guess that was kind of my big message. Yeah. Work the glutes, get under the barbell, and don't be afraid to get bulky. Don't be, don't be afraid to move and get under the barbell. And activate your muscles. And activate, activate. your muscles. And just invest in the $7 Amazon bands. Yeah. 
Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's a very, very cheap and easy investment. It makes such a big difference. Absolutely. When I started putting in the time for activation drills, it's, uh, it was a begrudging acknowledgement that, yeah, there's a point to this. There's a point to this. Good, <laughs> good. All right. Well, well, we'll talk to you guys soon. And of course, if you have any more questions or comments, please let us know below. And uh, you can reach out to Dr. Antonella at Antonella. K-A-H-L-E-R. Yep. -E I'll right. post it later in the comments as well. Yep, and I will post uh, Dr. Matt's uh, IG. He's got so many awesome infographics. Like all the time, it's just it's just value like so much great content. A lot of, a lot of times, I actually use your IG just as like as a reference point. If somebody yeah. comes in with a question, something specific, I'm like, I wonder what Dr. Matt's got on this. Yeah, well, <laughs> but I credit, I credit. I don't just yeah. take it. <laughs> I no, always I, credit. I, I don't, I'd rather see you use it. Just yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. So tons and tons of value. So make sure to check. Check it out. Cool. We'll talk to you guys soon. Right, Have a great day. Uh, Have a great Thursday. Bye, Bye. for now.